Our final question is, um, what, would you, what would be your number one um, recommendation or priority for the next administration? I know that's a hard question given where we are right now, but what does everyone think? That's a tough one. I mean, I think, um, Andrea, going back to your point and, and thinking about your work, um, I would, it would be difficult to, to say that there's one priority. I mean, certainly um, having equal pay uh, helps to lift a lot of boats. Um, certainly having um, preventative health care, um, getting somewhere closer to having um, universal child care for, um, for families. Um, so these are, are some of the issues I hope that we would take up. I can't, I don't know that I can pick just one. Um, certainly uh, looking at the uh, rate of, of mass incarceration, particularly for young girls and women of color, that's um, rising faster than any other demographic population. Um, and that, you know, is so interconnected to all of these other issues of employment and poverty and these sort of education. This is hard for me. Um, I agree with everything you said. No, I do. I do. Um, I want to answer that in a different way. I think the major challenge the next president faces is as much a battle for the soul of America as it is a battle for what America will do. Because right now we are so divided and we, divide our we, we, we define ourselves by what we are not. And we have to get back to figuring out how we can find what we have in common in a way that celebrates difference, that really concretizes equity in a way that gets us all safe enough in America to risk ourself. And if she can do that, um, or he can do that, it will be an extraordinary accomplishment. But it has to start fast, because without that, what the extraordinary agenda that's just been laid out, it won't happen. Amen. <laughs> Suzanne. I think it's absolutely essential that um, President Clinton invite more and more women of color and girls of color to the White House and fewer and fewer white women and white girls to the White House until the administration really begins to reflect society as a whole and society in all its parts and ceases to reflect only those people society has placed in positions of power. And I think back to um, the last NOW convention I attended, uh, which was in the 70s, uh, 1970, um, where the main theme was, was passage of the ERA. Uh, remember that, the Equal Rights Amendment? And um, I was there because I was a campaign manager for a friend of mine who was from Washington, D.C., and she was African-American and Native American, spoke fluent Spanish, 
also spoke fluent Russian and was um, the head of the Institute for Women of Color. And she was an ideal candidate. She was a great campaigner herself and um, really quite a fine scholar. So it, it, she was running for secretary. It looked like our side would prevail. And we were called to a meeting of the officers of the organization, and they asked her to withdraw. And here's what they said, with all innocence. We're almost about to pass the ERA. It's within our grasp. And we have to do that with the leadership speaking to the people who have to pass it, the white women. So now has to have a white face in order to reflect that goal. So let's get in there and win the ERA. Well, I don't know about some of the others as part of that campaign, but I never attended another meeting of that organization. And, um, of course, the ERA didn't pass, as we knew, because you can't pass something in, in this day and age speaking so overtly only to white people. And these were the good guys saying this to us. So sometimes people can get caught up in their own uh, lack of ability to tell the difference between where they are and where other people are in relation to them and to think of it as, as them having um, really done something fine to achieve that place of, um, uh, in the hierarchy. So I always want to keep that in mind. And, I, and that's a story that could be told about, with just a few changes, about almost any organization in the country and about almost any progressive organization in the country. So uh, it's not a knock on the one I told it about, uh, although that's the one it's true about. It is, I think, a good lesson for, um, for any organization or any movement to look back and, and say, where did we go wrong? Why is it we didn't get something that was right within our grasp? So. Thank you. Thank all of you.